What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. If you watched the last video, you'll know that today is going to be live stream day. Here at Hustler once again, and this time we are going to be playing 1020 on the live stream. Last time myself and Mariana were here, things maybe didn't go as smoothly as possible, but today it's a new year, new month, new everything, and I'm um, gonna take another crack at this whole live stream thing here in California. So wish me luck. We're gonna play 1020 in for, I think the max buy-in is capped at $10,000, so we're gonna start with that. And that's about it. More high stakes cash here at The Hustler. The quality is always amazing, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. Thanks so much for watching this video. Smash that like button. If you like these live stream videos, just let me know in the comments below, and by hitting that like button, I'll try to play in as many of these as possible as now I do have a place in Vegas, and I'll be closer to LA, so wish me luck. Let's get into the hands, 10K deep. Let's try to run it up. Starting off in this Hustler 1020 game, I buy in for $10,000, and I'm here with Mariano, obviously. Early on into the stream, I pick up 9-7 offsuit in the big blind. There's a $40 straddle on, and the cards aren't picking up for some reason. But anyways, this becomes a four-way limped pot. Going to a flop, which comes 5-5 five, five, deuce to spades. This flop really doesn't hit me at all, so action's going to check around. Off to a turn, which comes the eight of clubs, which gives my nine seven a gut shot straight draw. And when the small blind bets $70, action checked all the way through multi-way, and I'm thinking that no one really has anything too strong here. So with my gut shot straight draw, I don't want to just call with nine high. I want to win this hand early and on stream here. So I put in a raise to 230, thinking that I can put a lot of pressure on eight X holdings or even spade draws or something. But surprisingly, the cutoff player makes the call. Unsure of what is going on here, but when the small blind folds, we're playing out of position with a gut shot. Let's try to hit it. The river is the 10 of spades, so the flush draw gets there and decision time as I'm out of position. Certainly could just give up and check this one and lose with nine high, or I can actually fight for what's in the middle here and not sure what the cutoff player can have, like I said, but I fire an overbet of $800 hoping to get folds out of 8x or even 10x. But quickly, the cutoff player raises to $2,000 and I snap fold. I'm out of there with nine high and he shows us five deuce for a flopped full house. So slow played it on the flop and basically got the complete max. First session in, not going well. So maybe about an hour later into the stream, I've been super card dead and it looks like the camera caught me trying to do some arts and crafts with my chips. Just folding a lot so far, unfortunately, being card dead and that leads to some random activities like playing with my chips. So nice that the Hustler Live cameras caught this one. Two hours later into the stream, I finally pick up a hand when the hijack player limps to $40. With a $40 straddle on and onto me, looking down at pocket tens here. Out of position, I decide to put in a raise and size up to 260, and this limper in the hijack makes the call. So knowing that he's probably on the sticky type and likes to gamble, the flop comes 974 to spades. As good of a flop as I can ask for, as there's not too many two pair combos and a ton of draws on board with my overpair, I decide to bet pretty large to 430. And for this price, $430, my opponent makes the call. And like I said earlier on during this hand, I know he might be a little sticky with top pair or even draws. So let's try to get some value. The turn is the Jack of Diamonds. Although it's a card over my pair, it's not something I should be super concerned of right now. So like I said, the only hands that I would really lose to right now would be Jack-9, and that would be really unfortunate. So being exploitative here, I decide to continue betting out and go huge once again for around a pot size bet of $1,500. My opponent immediately has his hands go for chips. Looks like he's interested in the pot, thinks about it for a little bit more, and ends up making the call again. So with this tell, looked like he immediately did not want to fold. Probably has a nine? Maybe some draws, as there are a ton that he could have here. But anyways, we're going to a river with a big pot brewing, which comes the six of hearts. Not necessarily the best card that I wanted to see, but still, all the flush draws did miss. Regardless, a lot of straights could have gotten there as well. And here at this point, I'm thinking he either has a nine here or some sort of random hand that didn't connect, but not sure if he's going to bluff if I check it over to him. But I do think he's going to call a big bet if he has a pair of nines. So I go for that route. I decide to bet huge to $7,000. And as you can see from the screen, he only has a pair of sixes. Don't know if he would have bluffed at that if I checked it to him. But anyways, 
he folds, and I guess in hindsight, there's an argument that I could have checked on the river here and could have induced a bluff, but whatever. Don't get paid, but it's nice to win a hand, finally. Things are getting a little spicy now later in the stream as I put on the $200 straddle. That's right. We're playing 10, 20, 40, 100, 200, and surprisingly, a lot of players are interested in this spot. There are a billion limps or calls of the $200, and with the straddle on, I'm ready to close out the action, peel my cards, and look down at King 10 suited. Wow. Great looking hand to look down at and certainly think it's time to raise as there's so much money in the middle to fight for. This is also the second nuts on the blackjack tables. So maybe it'll work out here in poker. I decided to put in a raise and size up to $3,000 with all that money in the middle here. 3,000 is pretty large and chunky as it really commits everyone's stack and the player on my left immediately goes all in. Vahe Insta calls for about $1,600 total. So clearly got someone to commit their stacks. And once everyone folds, Vahe asks about running it once or twice. I always tell him I don't care. So we agree on one time because I'm just happy to do whatever my opponent wants to do. Then randomly flips the script on me and tells the dealer twice. Rampage being the hero we don't deserve. Steve, I don't care. One time's good. But the hero we need. <laughs> Everyone laughs. It's a good time and a good dynamic here at this table, and I obviously oblige. Sure, let's go twice. I'm behind with King High, I would only assume. So going to the first run out, which goes runner, runner, king. That's always a good sight to see, but not great as we used up a lot of our outs for the second run out. And unfortunately, flop comes ace high and we chop this one up. So we pick up all the dead $200 straddled money in the middle and win a little bit. One of the last interesting hands that I'll play on stream here, I pick up five, six of hearts with the $80 straddle on. I decided to put in a raise to $260 here with another really good blackjack hand, to be honest. Anyways, the cutoff makes the call and everyone else folds. So we're going heads up out of position. The flop comes jack 10, six to clubs got bottom pair and with two broadway cards on the board i decided to bluff basically with bottom pair and bet out 500 dollars. with this sizing of 500 he makes the call so not feeling great about it until the turn six of course why wouldn't we just magically turn trips here now went from bluffing to an easy value bet and want to size up here i bet out one thousand dollars for value and for a thousand he makes the call once again. So we're off to a river with a big pot brewing. It comes the king of hearts. This is another really good card for my range and also a card that I would absolutely bluff on if I had nothing. So going to bet like I would bluff as well. And I size up to 2300, but sadly he doesn't have much as he missed his club draw and folds. So once the stream ends, we're playing 10, 20, 40 now after the stream, and now it becomes uncapped. Took the cap off, and I add on $20,000 more into my stack, so I'm in the game for $33,000 total, and let's go into the hands where, right off the bat, finding some action, we're playing five-handed, I'm in early position with king eight of spades. I raise it up to $120 with a $40 straddle on. The big one player with the big stack makes the call, and Mariano to my right in the straddle calls as well. We're going three ways to a flop in position of king 10 8, two hearts and a diamond. Action checks to me, and I'm thinking this is a huge bink. With the very disguised two pair on a draw heavy board, I decided to bet big to $300. And as if life wasn't already so great with two pair, the big blind decides to put more money in the middle and check raises to $800. This is what dreams are made of here, as the big one player might be happy to commit stacks. But then also, actions onto Mariano, and he thinks for a long time, and then ends up making the call for 800. Really surprised by this action, and also at the same time, very confused. So much action going on, I'm in position, and I have to expect that my two pair here has to be good, unless I'm up against king 10 or pocket tens so with all this money in the middle and a lot of draws to be had on this board i decide to raise again put in a three bet on this flop and size to 2600 the big blind folds quickly unfortunately so we're not going to get action from him but back onto mariana who committed 800 dollars calling his raise after a little bit of thinking he ends up making the call so really big pot brewing now and will this be the first really big pot we play against each other 
Time to find out with already six to $7,000 in the middle. The turn is the five of diamonds. Brings in another flush draw on the board and Mario has about 7,500 in his stack. End of the day, the plan is simple and it's to get it all in by the river. Although there are a ton of draws that could be had here, I don't want to scare away those draws. I want to bet small enough where I can bet turn, then go all in river, like I said. So I size up to $2,200 and Mariano doesn't take too long before doing the all in himself. He check jams. I ask for a count, but I'm obviously not folding my two pair here. It's about $7,600 total. And yeah, I'm in here. I make the call playing a massive pot against our buddy. I show my king eight and we agree to run it twice. Looking like I'm ahead here. The run out comes pretty clean. Mariano Mux. And just like that, we win over a $20,000 pot against our buddy. Not sure what he had. I think later he told me he had 10-8 for flopped bottom two pair. And this seems to be just a cooler. In the next one, trying to run it up here after the stream, I pick up ace four of spades on the button. There's a hijack who limps to $40 and I put in a raise to 200. The big line calls $200 and now onto the hijack player. He does something silly. He actually limp raises to 500. The limp three bet strat seems pretty unorthodox, but it's such a small raise for only $300 that we're in position. I'm happy to gamble, make the call, and the big man feels the same way. He calls as well. So three ways in a three bet pot. Pot is brewing and the flop is king eight six all spades. Bink, can life get any better than this? Just flopping the stone cold nuts. And when action checks to me, I want to put money in the middle here. I certainly could get a lot of value from one pairs or even the queen of spades. So I bet small to $400 here. The big line folds and this hijack player who limp three bet makes the call. So not sure what he could be holding, but I'm just going to go for pure value. The turn is the three of diamonds, which changes absolutely nothing. He checks for a second time and time to get some more value. I decided on a bet to $1,100, but sadly, this is not going to get any action. He folds, but still, it's always a really good feeling to flop the nuts and just bet knowing you're going to get paid if he calls. Progressing on to the next one as the antics and post-game shenanigans are brewing here. There's a hijack open at $200 who is clearly very drunk, and I'm on the button with ace-9 off suits, thinking that this is going to be a good enough hand to play in position, especially against someone who's wildly drunk. Anyways, we're off to a flop heads up, which comes king-3-4 rainbow. He decides to bet out $90, and on this board texture here, I think I'm happy to call with ace-high. Let's just see what happens and what develops on the turn. When the turn comes the Jack of Hearts, this really isn't a great card for my specific hand. And even worse, he bets out $600. Well, $600 here would probably fold out ace high a lot of the time. But considering I've been playing here for the past few hours, I've seen this player progressively get more and more drunk. And with that, get more and more aggressive with his strategies. Yeah. That's all the explanation I need and decision point that I need to make the call again with just ace high facing a $600 bet. Let's go do that. I make the call and we're seeing a river, which is the six of clubs. Now he decides to just check and with ace high, I didn't really call thinking I was going to bluff the river. Certainly might think about doing that, but happy to get the show down here. I check this one back. He shows us eight, seven off suits and I'll take it. Ace high beats eight high, and there we go. Ace time, you slide this over closer so you get your wine. What? Your wine's here. You you Here's just a random fun quick clip of Mariano winning a ton of money back after the cooler that we played together. Seems like he's doing quite well. Wow. Nice time, Mariano. Thank you. Following that, we're playing six handed, and I pick up Ace King offsuit in the hijack. I raise it up to $140 and action city here as the night is getting pretty late. Three calls all around. So multi-way to a flop of 863 all spades. Another all spades board. And when action checks to me, totally whiffed. I'm just going to check this one over to the player on my left. And he bets out $250. The other two players in the hand make the call and... Okay, I'm not going to go anywhere with the nut draw and two overcards to the board. I call for $250 more, and somehow this pot has certainly ballooned up to a sizable one. The turn comes paint. The queen of hearts so close to hitting a pair here. 
but surprisingly, the big blind player now decides to lead into the field for 800. Okay, just a weird spot, I think. When action folds to me now, I'm in position facing an $800 bet. Things don't really change as I still have two over cards to the board and have the nut draw, so not going to go anywhere. Nothing else to do but make the call for 800 and everyone else folds. So heads up to the river. Let's try to bank this one. It's the deuce of diamonds, complete brick, and he makes my decision easy when he decides to throw out $5,000 into the middle. Okay, I have ace high. Um, maybe if he bet smaller, I could have thought about bluffing with the nut blocker, but not really too important or relevant here. I just fold ace high facing a massive bet. For the last hand of the night, I look down at 9-7 of clubs on the straddle here. There's a cutoff open to $120, the button makes the call, and for $80 more, this was specifically one of my favorite hands playing poker early on, so not going to go anywhere as well. I call for $80 and see a flop of 763. Once again, all spades. In this spot, action checks around to the button who took a really long time and ends up betting $300. This is the same drunk player that I've been trying to battle with and happy to make the call with just top pair here. There's a ton of draws and certainly could be ahead against whatever holdings he's got. So I call, the cutoff folds, and we're going heads up to the turn, which is ideal. Turn comes the deuce of clubs. Once again, I just check it over to him with top pair, happy to just call whatever bet he's going to throw out, and he decides on $800. Like I said, he can just do almost anything at this point, and when he's betting every single time, he certainly can't have it every single time. I call once again, and we're going to see a river with a pot ballooning up here. The river is a jack. Card over my pair, and not really loving it, but I check it over to him once again, and he fires out $1,700 this time. Like I've said so far in this commentary, given the dynamics of the table, I'm just not going to believe him. So I just make the call. I'm going to be really sticky with whatever I've seen so far and what he's been doing. I call and he has jack six of diamonds, rivers two pair and gets the max value from us. And that feels pretty bad. Pretty bad river, but GG's to him and not the most ideal way to end out the night. All right, let's just pan over how beautiful this city is here in LA. And outside, I am doing this little outro. It's quite late. We played for a while. This was an almost a nine hour session. Whew, with um, played a lot of hands, not a ton of huge ones, but on stream, off stream, it was a blast. And <laughs> let's just go over it. It was just an absolutely great time playing on stream. And unfortunately, the biggest hand that happened was with Mariano and it was literally like three minutes after the stream ended. So pretty bad timing in terms of ending the stream, but all things considered, things went well. It was a fun night. And to talk about numbers, after nine hours of play, I was in the game for 33,000, out for $40,100. And I wanted to take the intro and, or take this outro here and just talk about something that I've been getting a lot of messages about whenever me and Mariano play some big pots together. And this night was the one where we actually ended up battling. And that was like a, a real big pot of true significance, like almost $20,000 in the middle. And it's a lot of money. And how do we do that as friends and to offer full transparency and speaking on his behalf as well, me and him would never ever even consider thinking about like swapping action or, um, I don't know, giving the chips back or whatever. We're both really competitive in terms of poker and winning, and we would never soft play each other and play our hands differently because one another's in the pot or whatever it is. So um, yeah, I was going and playing normal. He plays normal against me as well. And unfortunately he had a cooler, told me he had 10-8. So um, yeah, people ask me all the time, Instagram DMs like, do you give the money back or whatever? And no, <laughs> I, I get to profit and keep the, the 10K that, that I won today from that pot. And yeah, un as unfortunate as it is and how big of a pot it is, it's just the nature of poker and how it is and we're still friends and we're cool and all that. So yeah, un it's unfortunate and not rooting to win big pots against him. But if two big hands collide, one of us were to win a big pot like we did tonight, then you know, it is what it is. Uh, we're still good buddies and, uh, and homies. And it's nice that the money doesn't affect our friendship off this felt. And um, that's it. That's all to say. I get a lot of questions about that, but I'm enjoying this amazing LA view. 
I mean, every time I come here, it's just absolutely incredible. Like, look at how, look at how beautiful it is. It's 2 a.m. and I don't know, something about this view is sick. So, anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Tomorrow's gonna be a big one. Twenty-five, fifty, fifty dollar ante. It's gonna be some big stacks. Wish me luck. Thanks so much for watching. Sticking around to the end. Tune in to the next video because you know it's gonna be a banger. It's gonna be some really big pots, bigger than today. See you guys next time. Peace.